Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. For this flight I'm going to fly from Kuala Lumpur to Singapore in an Evector EV55, which is this plane. It is a freeware plane. Originally I had slated it for a flight in Europe because it is a European plane, a Czech plane I believe. And unfortunately it just didn't have the speed to cover the distance in my usual desired one hour or so amount of time. So it got replaced by the Beriev A50, which is an IL-76 variant. So that was the leg that this was supposed to handle originally. And so it ended up here, flying from Kuala Lumpur to Singapore, which is only a 160 nautical mile distance. So, yep. Otherwise, it's a pretty nice uh, interior. I mean, again, uh, freeware, pretty good for that. And yeah, we'll see how it performs on this flight. Uh, we are continuing with the Apollo 12 audio and in this uh, flight we should get the ending of it or at least far enough where I'm not going to continue it. In other words, the whole splashdown and recovery thing can take quite a long time but they should splash down during this, this flight and then we'll continue on with Apollo 13 next time. So with that, uh, let me press play on that audio, picking up where we left off. Well, Houston, a reminder is that... Uh the camera settings for your fireball They're taking and photos photo of are not the, in the checklist. Uh, they only appear in the flight plan there. The eclipse uh, as they get close to the Earth. Anyway, let's go on. Let's get some flaps into. Twelve velocity now reading seventeen thousand two hundred ninety-four feet per second. Uh, we've been advised by recovery that uh, the Hornet's uh, coordinates at time of splash will be uh, fifteen degrees uh, forty-four minutes south. 165 degrees, 8 minutes west. The uh, target point uh, for Apollo 12 reads uh, 15 degrees, 49 minutes south. We should just be able to fly degrees, straight 10 minutes west. on this runway heading, actually. The ship actually. will be 5 nautical miles north and 2 nautical miles to the east of the target point, or 5.25 uh, nautical miles a straight line distance we're now uh, one hour ten minutes ten seconds away from uh, time of entry interface and this is Apollo Control Houston okay well maybe a little bit to the left would be best 12 Houston we're ready with your state vector if you'll give us accept okay just a second in the previous video of the SS anyone I noticed some parts where the recording seemed choppy, uh, where it wasn't choppy for me, so I think it was because it was clicking out of the window and uh, manipulating maps. I'll try to avoid that. This is a short trip this time, and so I'll try to avoid clicking out of uh, x 11 to check maps and such. Lots of trees. All in rows. The only change worth noting on your pad is EMS range to go. Okay, what's that? That is now 1166.3. I'll avoid that patch of bad Roger, photo scenery copy, over there. We'll just look on That's the coastal right. side. Can't have everything. I don't know, maybe uh, the new this Microsoft Flight Sim will have Houston, better stuff. Uh, you heard that call up uh, from Capsule we Communicator Paul White's advising Apollo 12, their entry pad remains uh, essentially the same as uh, the one previously passed to them. Meanwhile, in the control center, reading our uh, digital displays, we show a ground elapsed time for entry in the Earth's atmosphere of 244 hours, 22 minutes, 18 seconds. A ground elapsed time for begin blackout of 244 hours, 22 minutes, 37 seconds. A ground elapsed time uh, for O5G of 244 hours, 22 minutes, 47 seconds. A ground elapsed time for into blackout, 244 hours, 25 minutes, uh, 46 seconds and for drogue deployment at uh, some 23,000 feet in altitude of uh, 244 hours, uh, 30 minutes, uh, 22 seconds. We're coming up now on uh, 57 minutes from time of entry, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Maybe we should go closer to the coast. That's where most of the cities are. There is sort of an inland highway. 
Uh, that might be to our left there. You can sort of see a road there. And some of the cities occur on that. So it's tough to say. There's basically a belt of cities along the coast and another belt of cities along that highway. I think I'll go off the highway. Okay, Houston, are we go for a pyro arm for uh, command module RCS press? Stand by. Let's check on our red lines here. Seems like uh, 200 knot indicated airspeeds where the red line is roughly. It's more like 205, but 12, you said somewhere you're going around for logic there. Arm. So we'll go with that. Logic one, mark. Logic two, mark. Houston, your go for pyro arm. Alright, your go for pyro arm. So, roughly around here is the city of Seremban. This is Apollo Control Houston at 243 hours, uh, 28 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, Apollo 12 continuing to progress down I so don't know how to uh, pronounce to, uh, Malaysian city atmosphere. names, but you heard, uh, we'll try. You heard command module pilot uh, Dick Gordon talking with uh, capsule communicator Paul Weitz. Uh, for entry, uh, Dick Gordon uh, will be at uh, the controls of Apollo 12. And at approximately uh, entry interface minus 19 minutes, uh, program 61, uh, this is the entry preparation program, is called and uh, the spacecraft is pitched uh, manually to obtain uh, the horizon, which is checked against uh, a window marking uh, th some 31.7 degrees. At approximately entry interface uh, minus 18 minutes, uh, program 62, the pre-entry command service module uh, separation program is called. At uh, about minus 16 minutes uh, for, sep for separation, uh, Yankee Clipper yaws 45 degrees out of plane. A uh, guillotine mechanism uh, cuts the uh, connecting wires and tubing between the command and service modules and uh, small charges uh, set off by detonators uh, sever the uh, three tension ties. Separation should occur at approximately uh, 15 minutes prior to entry into the Earth's atmosphere. After separation, the command module uh, returns in plane. Uh, we'll stand by and continue to monitor. Uh, we now show uh, our ground elapsed time at 243 hours, uh, 30 minutes into the flight. Velocity continuing to increase uh, now. Uh, we read uh, 19,351 uh, feet per second. In uh, less than an hour, this uh, velocity, however, will almost double. We show an altitude above Earth at uh, this time of uh, 8,372.8 nautical miles. Up with the command module RCS check in just a minute. Well. Roger, Unfortunately, a lot of clouds baked into the surface, We're ready and whenever you are. we can see it's sort of a hazy okay. surface too. Probably because of the moisture in the air. Uh, 12, uh, we're bet between cities here. right now, following this highway. Look good, look good here. It is Highway E2, according to the map. And looks to go basically this straight is to Singapore. Control, Houston, uh, what you heard there uh, between Paul White's and Apollo 12. Uh, Apollo 12 uh, command module pilot uh, Dick Gordon uh, is presently going through uh, an RCS check, reaction control system check uh, on the command module. We're at uh, 243 hours, uh, 32 minutes into the flight, uh, less. Than 50 minutes now from time of entry into the Earth's atmosphere. We know it now show a velocity of uh, 19,748 feet per second and an altitude of 7,952 nautical miles. Standing by and continuing to monitor, this is Apollo Control Houston.
Uh oh, 12 Houston, give us Omni Charlie, please. Let's see what's the nicest Why view given the uh, sort of choppy photo scenery. That's not bad. This, this plane has a very nice nose. I do like this its is front Apollo end Control here. Houston. Uh, we're now at 243 hours, uh, 40 minutes into the flight of Apollo 12. Apollo 12, some 42 and a half minutes away from time of entry into the Earth's atmosphere. We presently show uh, the uh, Apollo 12 uh, command and service module at a distance of uh, 6,703 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity continuing to increase rapidly now, now rating at 21,013 feet per second. We uh, reach entry interface at a ground elapsed time of 244 hours, 22 minutes, 18 seconds. We show the uh, in retro elapse time, the uh, fairly prominent mar uh, mountain up ahead there. First, uh, don't know what that is. Period of the period of blackout beginning at 19 seconds uh, from time of entry interface. Re the uh, 12 spacecraft uh, reaching 05G at 29 seconds from time of entry interface. The uh, period of blackout ending at uh, 3 minutes 28 seconds uh, from time of entry interface. Uh, the uh, Drogue deployment at 8 minutes uh, 4 seconds, plus time from entry interface. The uh, de deployment of the uh, main parachute system, the three parachutes, at 8 minutes 52 seconds from time of entry interface. And a time of splash, 13 minutes 49 seconds from the time we enter the Earth's atmosphere. Continuing to monitor, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. I have to say, the descent process seems a lot faster this is Apollo Control in Houston the tapes at, uh, than it does when I do it in Kerbal. Two minutes now into the flight, uh, recovery has just advised uh, Flight Director Pete Frank that all recovery aircraft are on station and functioning. To uh, quickly run down. Uh, crew composition of some of these aircraft. Uh, air boss, I haven't had to uh, throttle down or anything. This is an We're EB still safely below the max. E1B uh, Tracer. But uh, technically our is engine temp Van is a little e. bit red, Bradley. is that right? Co-pilot is Lieutenant Al Pierce of Rochester, New York. Yeah, Controller well, is Lieutenant I guess we'll Junior bring it down Gray, into the yellow. Meany of Portland, Oregon. And uh, technician, avia aviation electricians made first class Angus Davis of Weeder, Utah. The uh, recovery number one aircraft, uh, this is the uh, helicopter, an SH-3D Sea King, which uh, will carry the decontamination swimmer, will be piloted by Commander William I thought Hart, about flying some helicopters, uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Decide, since I said 80 Lieutenant planes, Junior I decided Glenn to stick with Casey. that. Age 27, Winston Salem, North Carolina. The, North Carolina. Uh, contamination swimmer, uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade Ernest Lee Junkie. Well, maybe he was saying he was in North age, Carolina. Greenwich, Connecticut. Maybe that was all right. My mistake if he was actually specifying the, uh, North Carolina. Remaining two crewmen, uh, first crewman, uh, Chief Aviation Anti Submarine Warfare Operator uh, Ken Cunningham, 27, TIFF. City, Missouri. Second crewman, aviation anti-submarine warfare operator, second class, Abram Dominquis, age 33, of Tombstone, Arizona. Tombstone, Arizona. That's a thing. Swim one. Uh, this is a uh, helicopter. Yeah, this is pretty uh, choppy photo scenery. Is, I'll have uh, to find a better source for this area. I think. miles up range uh, from the Redownload this area. By Lieutenant Bill it's pretty Sherrod. bad. 28, M.O. Cali, uh, Florida is his home. Uh, Co-pilot, uh, Lieutenant uh, Junior Grade, Larry Liebarger, age 27, of Anchorage, Alaska. The uh, helicopter uh, Maybe Bing Maps uh, has improved in the run-up to will, uh, making Microsoft Flight Sim uh, 2020. Sea anchor or potentially can deploy the sea anchor and flotation collar. Uh, these include uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade uh, 
William C. Robertson, 27, Hampton, Virginia. So we're a swimmer, passing solar by technician, first a class, Arlie city Del called Alorgaja, age 29, Edinburgh, know Pennsylvania. My guess and is just mate, around here. Class, there are all William sorts of little places Cousy, around. Uh, 22, Linwood, yeah. Yeah, I mean, basically, yeah, this is all Alorgaja. Yeah, the, uh, the swim two helicopter, uh, this uh, position to 15 nautical miles downrange is piloted by uh, Lieutenant Gray Linker, age 26, Mooresville, North Carolina. The uh, three swimmers aboard. To the right of us is Malacca International Airport and Bandaraya Malacca. Malacca strikes me as a fairly familiar city name. Just double check that you're on primary. Roger, we're on primary. So that's over there to the right there. You can see the runway, I think. Yeah, three swimmers. Is that the runway? Maybe it's just a road. No, I think that's the runway. Helicopter swim two include uh, Lieutenant uh, Junior Grade Johnny Winger, age 27, Argyle, Wisconsin. Electrician's mate, uh, second class James D. Cousins, age 33, Toledo, Ohio. We seem to be making Ohio. good time. How's the wind? And hospital corpsman. Well, the wind's not exactly Dennis in our favor. D. Oh, that's 30,000 feet though. Still not in our favor. Age 23, Calistoga, Florida. And we could tell uh, we'll that by the by ground speed up and there. Continue to monitor. Uh, we show now that we're. Well, oh, Houston, give us VHF left, please. Roger, VHF left. Correction to that last hometown. That is Calistoga, California, Vice, Florida. Yeah. Make we sure show it's that uh, California. we're 34 and a half minutes away from time of entry in the Earth's atmosphere, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Definitely get all that right. Okay, Houston, bus time. Roger, 12. Let's see, good angle somewhere. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 243 hours, uh, 52 uh, there's minutes. There's no angle uh, that, that there's not a seam in the photo scenery, unfortunately. The landing batteries have, Maybe we should take uh, it like this. On. We now show Apollo 12 at a distance of uh, 4,509 nautical miles from Earth and traveling at a velocity of uh, 23,845 feet per second. We're uh, 29 minutes uh, from time of entry in the Earth's atmosphere, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. I did turn off real-world weather uh, when we were flying in the Himalayas, but it is back on now. So it just happens to be good clear skies Hello, with some Houston, nice I'll clouds time hack over Malaysia minutes, today. Which is about 50 seconds away. And if one of you wants More to scenes. turn down your S-band volume, uh, we'll get a VHF voice check. Okay. Yep, definitely problematic scenery around here. On the other hand, at least it's not the repetition of the stock scenery. Hello, Apollo 12, Houston, uh, S-Band VHF, Simon, how do you read? Stand by for a mark at 25 minutes. Three, two, one, mark. Less than uh, 10 minutes away now from time of separation of the command and service modules. Houston, were you reading our VHF? This is Charlie, Mr. Roger. Roger. 
Down in front of us is called Tong Kok. Well, Houston, if you're talking VHF now, you're very broken and garbled, and we're not reading you yet. Hello, here's the Apollo 12 under here. Loud and clear, Dick. Okay. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 243 hours, 59 minutes into the flight. Apollo 12 now at an altitude of uh, 3,688 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity now reading at 25,161.5 feet per second. That is a nice this patch. Well, Control there's still Houston. that cloud line there. But. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 244 hours into the flight now. Uh, looking at the uh, display which shows the onboard computer, uh, we see Apollo 12 in program uh, 61, which is uh, the entry maneuver to uh, command module, service module, separation attitude. And Apollo 12 now uh, 3,688 nautical miles away from Earth traveling at a speed of 25,161 feet per second. I think the city to our right there is Apollo called Muar. Houston, uh, 244 hours, three minutes. Uh, M-U-A-R. Service module should be yawing very shortly to uh, out of plane uh, 45 uh, degrees. So we'll continue to monitor. Apollo Control Houston, uh, we show uh, Apollo 12 with a velocity of uh, 25,161 feet per second. We're at 244 hours, uh, five minutes into the flight. Present altitude, uh, 3,688 nautical miles. Standing by, this is Apollo Control. The uh, guidance and control officer uh, confirms that 12 is moving to separation attitude at this time. We're at 244 hours, six minutes into the flight. Okay, Houston, we're going to arm the fire ropes for SEP. Roger, 12. We now reach spacecraft weight of uh, 24,978 pounds. Pretty curvy river in front here. It's Apollo Control standing by for separation. Uh, less than a minute away now. Down to our left there is called Bukit Gambir. Separation is confirmed by the guidance and control officer in mission control. We're at 244 hours. Soon we confirm separation. And yeah, that river flows down to that city called Muar. We're at 244 hours, 8 minutes now into the flight. Very current. Present river. altitude, uh, 3,688 uh, nautical miles. Apollo Control Houston, the guidance and control officer, uh, confirms that Apollo 12 flying a Ring A uh, reaction control system entry. We're at 244 hours and nine minutes into the flight. Seems like around here, the highway we've been following is called J-23. It's Apollo Control Houston uh, monitoring the uh, display showing the onboard Well, at least computer. it has that tag. Maybe that's the, the highway uh, crossing. The onboard computer still tell. in uh, program 62. Yeah, maybe it's the highway crossing. We're in program 63. Still E-2 uh, otherwise. Up on the computer. Uh, we will try to, to get an over-the-shoulder look at... Uh, range to go to splash and velocity rate so we'll stand by and continue to monitor that display we're about halfway Apollo through Control, the flight Houston, uh, we're now reading uh, program 63 now in 64 we show a uh, velocity I'll give you another hack on your DET at 10 minutes, which is about one minute from now. Okay. Uh, we show a velocity uh, reading of uh, 31,000 
37 feet per second. A range to go of 4,352 uh, uh, nautical miles. Apollo Control Houston, Apollo 12 clipping along now. We show a velocity of uh, 31,355 feet per second. Range to go uh, to splash of 4,229 nautical miles. For your mark, three, two, one, mark, 10 minutes. Roger, we're right with you. Apparently here is Bandar University Pago, and there's a city of Pago somewhere. Uh, Apollo Control the Houston about highway, uh, four minutes before uh, entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, we will lose uh, data. The, the However, university is retain, underneath uh, us right voice now. Voice communications uh, with Apollo 12 through uh, one of the Araya aircraft. That would be at uh, five minutes before entry interface. We now show a velocity of uh, 31,945 feet per second, a range to go 4,100. Uh, a 4,014 nautical miles. That's Pago to the left there. I guess it's more appropriately called a town. This guy University, it's a university town. The uh, last tracking station in the Pacific. I thought I'd seen a mountain to, around, uh, but. have data will be uh, Guam. That now seems to have evaporated. Hours, uh, 14 minutes into the flight of Apollo 12. Continuing to speed in at a rapid clip, uh, we now read uh, 32,306 feet per second. Range to go 3,867 nautical miles. Apollo Control Houston, 244 hours, uh, 15 minutes now into the flight. Uh, present velocity, uh, 32,813 feet per second. Range to go, 3,641 nautical miles. Less than seven minutes now until time of entry in the Earth's atmosphere. We show a velocity of 33,190 feet per second. Range to go of uh, 3,476 nautical miles. Guidance and control reports. Uh, 12 is looking very good. A very small reaction control system. Uh, usage at this time. We're at 244 hours, 16 minutes down to the flight of Apollo 12. I guess basically like SAS or MECJEB, it still likes to puff to around. Until, uh, entry now, we show a velocity reading of uh, 33,704 feet per second, range to go of 3,223 nautical miles. Less than five minutes to go until entry. Uh, we show a velocity now of uh, 34,217 feet per second. Range to go to splash of uh, 2,934 nautical miles. Uh, we're at 244 hours, uh, 17 minutes uh, now into the flight of Apollo 12. Retro fire officer confirms that we're looking good uh, from his vantage point. We now show a velocity reading of 34,577 feet per second, a range to go to splash of 2,729 nautical miles. Well, part of the reason I wanted to do this flight was to see where I might have patchy or incorrect photo scenery and well we've, I found uh, it. We've lost data with the uh, Guam tracking station. We however will uh, retain voice communications uh, capability through uh, an Araya aircraft. As we lost data we read a velocity of uh, 34,780 feet per second. Okay well the astronauts are coming in. Of, uh, 2,617 nautical miles. Apollo 
Yeah, expect a whole bunch of static from here on. For the most part, I've been cutting out the static and the audio. But I wanted to give the authentic experience at this point. <laughs> Okay, uh, we're approaching a town con a called Yongpen. Ping, Yongpen. No, that's the one in front of there. That town is Yongpen. minutes now from time of entry uh, capsule communicator Paul White says communicated with 12 uh, through the Arai aircraft uh, via VHF we're at 244 hours uh, 20 minutes now to the flight of Apollo 12 minute and a half away now from time of entry in the Earth's atmosphere. than a minute away now from entry. Uh, the uh, first, the period of blackout should begin uh, 19 seconds after we enter the Earth's atmosphere. We'll stand by and continue to monitor, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. should be entering the Earth's atmosphere at this time at uh, 400,000 uh, feet. Houston, coming up on blackout, we'll see you at 328. Apollo 12 uh, should have begun its blackout some seven seconds ago. Oh, we can actually see some cars on the highway. I didn't think that they would be rendered at this altitude, but there they are. Usually the cop cars are rendered at a fairly long distance, but not much else. But, no, well, there's, uh, we I think that blinking one in, uh, up ahead is a cop some car. Two and a half more minutes from this time. But there are other cars on the we road, too. We now show a uh, ground elapsed time of 244 hours, uh, 23 minutes into the flight of Apollo 12. Uh, copy, heading south, 12. We copied the uh, Hornet is uh, heading south, uh, 12 knots, uh, for its uh, terminal position uh, for splash, which would be uh, 5.25 uh, nautical miles uh, north of our target point. That's pretty good. Apollo Control Houston, uh, recovery reports the Hornet uh, has uh, radar contact on Apollo 12. So you can see on the map there, in fact, the uh, entire We're, trip uh, can fit on uh, this map. Seconds away from w the WMKK when, is uh, uh, Kuala Lumpur period should, uh, over to ended. the left, and right at the bottom, 
You can see the uh, Peninsula control, and uh, Island Clear, to get the Yankee Clipper between the Singapore, and 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 deploy, Singapore International Airport is this three runway one here, to, to WSSS. Get the WSSS. off of the uh, computer display keyboard, but its uh, current plan is not to attempt to contact uh, the Yankee Clipper after drogues have been deployed. 12, Houston, over. Apollo Control Houston, a report uh, from the Hornet that indicates that that radar contact uh, showed a, a uh, range of uh, 103 nautical miles and uh, a bearing of uh, 261 degrees. Well, reading it loud and clear now. Okay, it's right on the money. Raj, we concur, Pete. Pete Conrad says right on the money. The first time I got a shower was Very good uh, voice reception uh, through Araya. This counts as very good under the circumstances. Hornet advises uh, radar contact now with a range of 69 uh, nautical miles, 69 nautical miles. With an altitude of 121,000 feet. We're about a minute and a half away now from time of uh, drogue deploy. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo Control, Houston. Houston, we have radar and S-band contacts on you. Roger. I mean, even the period of blackout was hardly anything. We should be getting uh, drogue shoot deployment right now. Uh, we're standing by. reports uh, deployment of the drogues. Less than 10 seconds away from main shoot deployment. I guess, I mean, of course I have cut out some stuff, but I think in this part I haven't cut out too many silences, so this is more or less the pace. But I did cut out some stuff. I guess it is somewhat deceptive. Because I cut out all those bits. The silences. Uh, 
Albine uh, reports uh, three main chutes have deployed. They were at 8,000 feet on the way down in great shape. Well, Houston, uh, give us your lat long, please. Airbots, we read your lat clear and we're okay. That's not what he wanted. He wanted latitude longitude. He doesn't care whether you're okay or not. <laughs> So we are approaching Singapore here. Uh, let me try and get the range here. I guess about 50, well, within 50 nautical miles, certainly. Within 40, actually. It's interesting that it has these three airports, like, all in a row, pretty close to each other. Actually, maybe four are there, all on the island. We're still in Malaysia, of course, and we we're approaching the Malaysian side suburbs, I guess you could call them, of Singapore. I see on the map Iskandar Puteri, Johor Bahru, and Pasir Gudang. There's three large cities on the Malaysian side. What appeared to uh, be smoke uh, from the spacecraft was the uh, dumping of uh, propellants. Sorry about the flickering, uh, there's cloudiness around basically, is what causes the flicker. Get that time. Uh, we record splash at uh, ground elapsed time of 244 hours, 36 minutes, 24 seconds. 
Okay, get in all the history books. <laughs> Funny noises. Apollo 12 uh, landed uh, stable two. The inflation bags will upright them. Stable two basically means upside down, so. It takes about uh, six to eight minutes uh, to uh, upright the command module from a stable two position with apex up. seems to be getting worse and worse as we approach Singapore. A preliminary estimate uh, from the Hornet places Apollo 12 some uh, 2.5 nautical miles uh, from the ship. And the uh, command module is uprighting itself at this time. The city we're currently over is Johor Bahru, and we're basically following the highway to a bridge uh, across to Singapore, which is of course an island, or a group of islands, but ma uh, one main island. Yep, boy, the clouds are sure gotten cloudy. Try and get below them. See some serious buildings here on the side of the border. Not the best side of them. For the next flight, I'll be flying uh, Airbus A380 from Singapore to Jakarta. That report confirming uh, Stable 1 says the uh, spacecraft is uprighted at this time. So we can sort of see the bridge there, and we are now crossing over into Singapore. It is not the best view. Uh, you know what, I mean, for sightseeing purposes, I'm gonna once again...
turn off the real world weather. It's stormy. This is not good for sightseeing. Look at all that scattered cumulus. It's like a solid 20,000 feet of scattered cumulus and then rain down here. Crazy. No, just give us clear skies for now. And nice visibility. Okay. Yes, supply changes. Okay, there we go. So, <laughs> much better. Um, so that behind us is Johor Bahru. You can see the nice buildings there. And then this is Singapore on this side. Lots more green than I would think. Lots more green. I mean, considering it's a city-state, I don't necessarily expect to see this much green on the island, but here we are. It's got an airbase, so it's got three airports and no, actually, uh, it's got two airbases. There's an airbase to our right there. That's Tenga Airbase. Tengo Airbase, maybe? Tengo Airbase. And then uh, up there, oh, three airbases, jeez. Sebawang Airbase is the one behind us there. So it's actually three air bases and then one airport. Oh no, there's, there's, there's a lot going on. Take it back, there's five different airfields in Singapore. Three air air bases, there's one, the major airport, and then there's one I'm not sure of right now. And I'm not gonna mess with the map right now. Yep, did not expect uh, Singapore to look quite like this. You can see across the way that's that's Malaysia over there. Across the water. So we're roughly heading towards downtown Singapore. The uh, first swimmer uh, deployed will attach a sea anchor, an underwater parachute to stop the drift of the command module. I mean, I guess I should have figured. I mean, I'm familiar with Hong Kong, so... And Hong Kong has a lot of greenery too, despite being... I mean, the island of Hong Kong being an island of many millions of people. Still plenty of greenery. Not at all like, uh, you know, New York City, Manhattan Island That's with the confinement of Central uh, Park, you can see. Both Singapore and Hong Kong have quite expansive greenery. And apparently there's a square of green right there for some reason. Um, these are container terminals. I don't think that that patch, that square right there is supposed to be green. Uh, first swimmer into the I don't think that's supposed to have trees on it. That's a container class, terminal. William R. Posey, Posey spelled P -O -Z -Z -I, age Most of the rest Linwood, of this is supposed uh, to be green though. Judging from the map. Uh, no, I don't seem to have that plug-in. I, I noticed the buildings sort of phasing in. 
I wondered if that plugin was doing that. Okay, yeah, it was. We'll take a slight frame rate hit to make sure that we see all the buildings properly. Otherwise, it was pretty hazy. There we go. Singapore in proper glory, if you will. Across the water over there in the distance you can see some islands that are part of Indonesia. And of course uh, to our right is the Singapore Strait, very busy passage for four ships. Island to our immediate right with what looks like a golf course is called Sentosa. And then here is uh, the main the, city of uh, Singapore and its marina. Remaining swimmers uh, from swim one being worked around the command module this time. Our uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade William C. Robertson, 27 Hampton, Virginia and sonar technician uh, first class Arles L. Nash, 29, Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. And are attaching it to the There's a curious looking thingamajig there and I don't know what to make of that. This must be like a stadium tilted or something. That's weird. There's roads okay, around it. You. All around it. Interesting. Sun Tech City. Apparently this is Sun Tech City that we're flying over right now. Okay, well there's the airport. There's an air base to our left there, too. Okay, let me get into the cockpit and do landing things. The uh, flo flotation collar is pulled out uh, one side at a time and uh, pulled around with a bunge with bungee lines. Uh, two air bottles uh, will inflate them. Three quarters around the command module. again so that so it's smoother on landing. Okay, let's try some flaps. And landing gear. Uh, 
This is our current status. I was sort of expecting more ships around here today. Oh well. One runway. Yeah, I want to go for the rightmost runway. So I think we should start turning now. of three rafts will be deployed very shortly. Okay, we're a bit low, as sort of expected. I think it's because it's uh, it switched tapes, so there was a bit of an overlap. Uh, this is Hornet. I don't believe we copied the uh, vertical axis stability. Uh, Roger. At this time, vertical axis stability is approximately 15 degrees, with the exception of the passage of a crest, at which time it increases to about uh, 25 degrees. Still thinks I'm too low, but I'm gonna land anyway. Oh, so sunk. I lost sink right there. Ow. Two is now being inflated. 
Okay. Inflation appears to be normal. Okay, yeah, uh, let's... For 10 days it's not really our taxi vessel now proving to be a seaworthy vessel. We're standing by. Okay. Uh, well, we'll take that one anyway. Okay. They have arrived back on Earth, and next time we will be listening to Apollo 13. So let me set the brakes there for now, and let me pause the audio. And so we finally got through Apollo 12. We have arrived in Singapore, and next time an Airbus A380 to Jakarta. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.